Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an African concept meaning I am me because you are. Thank you for being and thank you for tuning in and thank you for loving poetry. My name is Lillian Allen. I'm an author, uh, a dub poet. I've got uh, several books, um, including Psychic Unrest, uh, Women Do This Every Day, and uh, coming out now, imminently, uh, Make the World New, selected uh, works, old and new, um, edited by Ronald Cummins from Wilfrid Laurier Press. I'm also a recording artist, um, recording uh, dub poetry with music, uh, two Juno Award uh, winning uh, albums to my uh, name, Revolutionary Tea Party, and Conditions Critical. I also write for children. Again, thank you for being here. Uh, I will share with you two poems. The first is, I saw a perfect tree today. I saw a perfect tree today from my cabin bed on a via rail train through the north of Ontario. I saw a perfect tree today. It was tall and thin and scraggly and prim. And then I saw another just as perfect, short and sturdy with branches and brambles. And then another with a rugged fat trunk, older than the rest, but just as perfect. I saw a dozen trees in a clump sharing the light. So their growth was stunted, but regal they were, plump and perfect. And then a small twisted tree with leaves fallen, trunk slanted, all the more perfect. I saw tens and hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of trees, not one single tree exactly like another. And yet they were all perfect, all perfect trees. A man child um, from Mississauga heading to Ben Steele to make his fortunes in the Alberta oil fields says, I've never seen so many trees in all my whole life. A balding dude, 30 years, a social worker, retiring home to Winnipeg comms. Where I come from, they cut them down, all of them, long, long, long time, long before I was born. And I am reminded that this land, this land, where cities have sprouted, blooming, glistening skyscrapers at night. It was all covered with trees once. One big forest we were once, all perfect trees. And my second piece is called Pandemic, the year 2020. And I wrote this um, in the first year of the pandemic. Um, well, around the time uh, when it uh, seemed like the whole world was getting woke um, around uh, the existence, the persistence, and the brutality of anti-black racism. Um, so I wanted to mark uh, both the pandemic and that event. Pandemic. The year 2020, time reversed the world into a pause. Search the lost and found for meaning, misplaced things. Frantic, we grow up in quarantine within ourselves, but not quarantined from our fears and our conscience growing thin. How can you fathom that stepping out your door or going to the supermarket to get groceries or meet up with friends at dusk could be a death sentence. Ask any young black man. Ask any young black man. In social isolation, we rest, become restless. The unknown looming, weighty words, lockdown, shelter in place, social distance, isolation, self-isolation, quarantine, infection count, intubate, debt toll. 
words screaming for submission. There is an enormity to the immensity of this pandemic moment, a glum, impenetrable disquietude, the Anthropocene like worms in cottonwood. We have been moving through life like it's our first feast, paid by an anonymous benefactor with infinite generosity, eyes a glitter everywhere. People say it's a sign the greed of the world's ruling classes has gone too far, that we have given up too much of our personal values, flittering. Our flitter, an accomplice to the pain of the othered. Now woke in from our universal fidget, drowning in busy and significance with our things we flitter where to put our efforts like where to put your eyes in feelings of shame then the george floyd murder twisted our necks and we couldn't look away our flitter waited as we held our breath didn't breathe until until in a collective gasp we found a voice to exhale black lives matter Black lives matter, black lives matter. Then the streets became our canvas and the silence of the internet clicked and clonked and community emerged to coalesce around the horror of racism we all know, gaslighted for decades. Black people are harmed by the spit and spite of white people turning away even above systemic inequalities and white supremacy pressing on our necks. The year 2020, the world changed before white folks did, before white folks did enough, before white folks did enough to courage up to fight against anti-black racism. We're all in this together. Are we all in this together? Embrace this poem. Talk back to this poem. Gently. Again, Ubuntu, thank you for hanging out. And um, stay cool and stay safe. And stay loving poetry. I'm Lillian Allen. Hello, my name is Di Brandt. And I'm grateful to Turnstone Press for publishing so many beautiful books and for having played an influential and formative role in my own life and career as a Canadian poet and author. Hey, let's give a shout out to the small literary publishing houses like Turnstone Press that have been the backbone of Canadian poetry publishing this last half century. Bravo, bravo. Thank you. I am likewise honored to be invited to contribute to this prestigious poetry reading series curated by the talented Sarah Enns, and especially to share the stage with one of my favorite people in the whole world, my esteemed and beloved friend, the brilliant poet and cultural activist Lillian Allen of Toronto. Hi, Lillian. I'm going to read two poems for you from my 1990 collection, Agnes in the Sky, which received the McNally Robinson Manitoba Book of the Year Award and was recently featured in the Winnipeg Arts Council's public art project, Winnipeg Words. So you can find one of the poems from this book, writ large in a public window at the Charleswood Public Library. Check it out. Here's what the book looks like with a beautiful cover image from a painting by the talented Winnipeg artist Anne Smith. The book's in print, so why don't you get a copy if you don't already have one or if yours has acquired too many dog ears and smudges by now as many of the poetry books in my uh, library have done. Okay, here goes. 
a brave leaping in air toward the nothing of sky, imagining a haven heaven that isn't there, flinging ourselves across oceans through unimaginable terrors to meet for an hour under glass, the flickering light of this blue dome, planes crashing overhead. Let me look at you, savor the cerveza in my mouth, your eyes, the green tree behind you, this fallen leaf, invisible arms that have held you flying dizzily through the universe, kept you alive. This fear we have of ecstasy, Earth's embrace, this fear we have of flying, coming home. And this is Prairie Love Song. Think of me when you think of me as prairie grass, deep-rooted, long-armed, reaching through dark soil through the long summer, searching for underground rain, while the sky shimmers with dust along the horizon, singeing the green earth brown, and the spectacular throated meadowlarks have trouble with their singing. Think of me as parched. Think of me as flaming. My white limbs rooting in the dark earth deep and cool and full of longing.